just hear the joy in his voice, folks. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's just crazy that it kills that early from cross stage now after the yeah. changes. I mean, it definitely needed a little bit of a buff, but that much? Yeah. Well, I suppose he needed it considering he was considered the worst of the heavies before the patch. Yeah. And again, Soldier just all this early percent, but this is where he struggled, getting the stock clean off here. And then Runes gets to work with his rage, get some damage. Or at least try to get some damage. And Tojo's actually using his real palette mana color now, so like you know he's actually like oh. he put the real dress on. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta put on your Sunday best. Thursday night best. <laughs> this is the best palette color too. I love the blue. Dang. I swear it feels like he's so close to getting the timing on that two frame. Yeah, it almost feels like as soon as you sat down, you start missing those. Maybe I should hop off commentary. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I can't leave you alone. Heavens knows what you'll end up saying. Oh. I, I was I was doing just fine. <laughs> Alright, a little twinkle toes. Good. Ooh, there we go. This is like if you compare to how like game like game four, game five went in that first set to yep. now, this is like a totally different like Set almost. Yep. Got to lead that the dash attack. Jeez. It's like Rune just keeps trying to create these openings so he can get in, but Dojo's been doing a really good job playing at the right distance. But one whiff grab is all it takes for the stocks even. just starting to play a lot more patient now because I feel like that's really where he's been exceeding more because Tojo's been doing a good job capitalizing on his overextensions. Yeah. And one thing I've... Uh, oh, God. A little too deep. Yep. One thing I've noticed from Tojo is that when he, like... So he had, like, a stock lead that entire time and then Runes takes the stock and Runes is at, like, 100-something percent and Tojo comes out with a fresh stock but, like, Tojo didn't get a single hit for, like, almost, like, 100%. Yeah. And one thing I, I've noticed from like throughout these two sets is that like Tojo what he does, like when he has like the lead he wants, he almost he's still like is trying to like kinda like push his advantage when he uh all he has to do is kinda like sit back, like you're Palu, dude. Like let the big ape come to you. Yeah. Because if the big ape comes to you, that means he it has to like leave uh his like safe bubble to try and like approach you. I mean what's he gonna do? Dash grab? And again, there's that explosive flame, like you were saying, it's not really working out for him as an edge guard option. Yeah. And like I know, I know the feel, like why you always want to go for explosive ones and like, damn it, it looks so cool to get hit by it. Yeah. Now we're like spoil everybody in a wind to hit it. Oh! Alright. I like that call. It wasn't really about positioning to pull off that. So using the Nair to get that extra damage was definitely a good call on Tojo's part. Yeah. No the light. Bubba da Man, remember when Kid Icarus was just an NES game? Yes. Back in the day. I remember my friends and I like downloading Kid Icarus <laughs> and then playing it because of Brawl. Yeah. And, and we're like, like bro, this game is like fun. Yeah. I actually really enjoyed Kid Icarus. Yeah, we no. never got past it because like that game was actually very difficult. Yeah. And we, we could only ever get to like world like three or four and then we, we just like gave up because it was just like <laughs> too hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hopefully not as hard as it is for DK to get off the edge or even get in half the time. Oh, it's about equal. <laughs> it's about equal. And he switches over to the red dress. He's got bl blood in the water. The blood of a pink DK. Yep. Down air to bear. Okay. Oh, <laughs> he could have teched it. Yeah. But he didn't. And that is the risky run going off stage like that. Because, I mean, if you don't get your attack out first, the opponent can just turn it around on you, and things will just go south real quick. Yeah. There we go. 
Now that's going to be so nice, being able to cancel that up be off those platform ledges like that. Oh yeah, that's half the reason why I like playing Palos, because she gets the ledge cancel with up B. That lingered so long. Y'all remember when she could ledge cancel Bouncing Fish? Good I'd, times. I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first nerf soccer I did to target just me, I swear. <laughs> got rid of ledge cancel bouncing fish. I abused the crap out of that back in like 3DS. I, th I think it was 3DS. I, I don't think it made it into Wii U. Yeah. Alright, gets the grab, gets the up air, gets yep. the kill. That like, I think the percent range for Dingong and Palu on PS2, if done correctly, is like 65 to 70, like 3 or 72. And like that just means like if DK throws you as he lands, he's just gonna get the up air guarantee. Yep. Yeah, and that honestly is a pretty good range for considering some other characters. Yeah. Wow. Well, I guess he wanted to pay runes back for the SD last stop or last game. Yeah. Donkey Kong wins. Yeah, right, so here is that first stock. Yep, the unfortunate trade. And Bruce just really charging that for way too long. Jeez. Brought him, jump him back up. Now, I wonder if we're going to see, I don't think we're going to see a character switch come out from Tojo at all. No. Like, though, like, PT or Pichu could maybe do good uh, in this matchup, it's just going, sitting with Palo is just such a smarter choice. Yeah. You just, Kind of like uh it's like a get out of, almost a get out of jail free card in a lot of aspects. True, true. I mean the risk you take with those other characters is some of them are really light, so they'd get sent super far by DK. So right now again, what they're just really good at getting this opening gambit where he just runs over runes, gets all this damage. Yeah. And it's like that the opening the, the opening contest for uh, uh, Tojo is that that's really where he kind of like shines. Yeah. Well, that runes just keeps on making these comebacks, racked up a little bit of percent, but Tojo finding an overextension there and punishing him. It's like. It feels like he's having a little bit of trouble finding his way back past all these nares and back airs. Yeah. The flurry of moves is really making it hard. Good call on that ledge cancel, too. Oh my god, almost gets the nair. <laughs> you had a shield, it's gone. Dude, that's <laughs> now the second shield break that's set by. I mean, considering how strong that headbutt is, it doesn't surprise me. I'm surprised he doesn't go for it a bit more, honestly. Yeah. Especially with that super armor it's got. And now you can kind of see uh, Toja just kind of like sinking back into his comfort zone. Uh, get him, like, get get the DK off stage, use his close flame. Yep. Good call, just going up to that top platform. That's one of the really nice things about having an invisible recovery like that. It makes it difficult for your opponent to react to where you're going. Definitely. Oh my gosh. Nearly killing. Oh that one my killed. god, that was a meaty bear too. Yeah, I mean, once Roots has gotten these stock leads, it's just felt so much harder for Tojo because he can't really force runes to approach reliably. Yep, and at this point it's like Tojo's kind of like just trading hits, trying to fi like find a way to just like get DK caught up in the neutral air. Yep. Oh yep. my lord. Goodbye. Oh. Just God. so much pressure there, constant back airs. I mean, the way he was spacing him right at the edge of that platform to make sure that he couldn't get the ledge cancel just forced him to have to rely on that platform. And just like earlier, got a shield broke. Two shield breaks, one set. <laughs> one palu. Yep. You gonna see it in time? 
No, I don't think we're going to see no, it. We're going to see it. There it is. Oh. <laughs> One. Go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfectly timed. It's like Gushi does this for a living. You'd think so. One, one good thing. Boom. Boom. 50, 60 percent. Gotta love it. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I mean, look how much shield damage that did, though. Like, one headbutt, there's three quarters of your shield gone. Yeah. Look at that. One, uh, two neutral airs. Three quarters of your stock is gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gonna go for a large bear, but not gonna get it. Just keeps trying to poke with these aerials as Runes is getting up. But he's Runes has been doing a good job just mixing up the timing of when he's getting up. Yeah. Yeah. That headbutt's really starting to come in handy for Roots. Roots is uh, ace in the hole. By putting Palu in the hole. Yep. Oh, oh, he tried to go for E. Yep, I like that call, but Roots able to recognize the situation. Just ran out of there. <laughs> that would have killed. A yeah, ledge like that with that much range? It would surprise me if it didn't. Dash attack still not enough to kill, but an off air catching runes trying to give him the slap slap. The slap slap. The, the bulby. Yep. Slap slap slap. <laughs> into a clap clap clap. <laughs> uh, could you imagine if they made a voice mod pack for that? Uh. Well, again. Ultra just doing everything he can to rack up his damage before Ruse completely runs away with this. But the problem is, Ruse has just been doing a good job outspacing him this entire time. He's got the up tilt. All right, and this is looking like the the fat lady singing right now because yeah. this is not looking good for Tojo. Nope. Nice. Oh. Okay. You can only try and get away from that for so long. Yep. And Runes from Losers takes it with a 3-2 victory, then a 3-1 victory. Dang, couldn't and make it to midnight. <laughs>